Hi, and welcome back to the business of building applications. In this course, we're talking about the management and the business decisions that go behind creating an application, whether it's for your business or for a startup. But it's about mobile apps and the process that is used. So we're in this section here called hiring the team. And so we're going to, in this video, talk about managing your team and using the agile software process. If any of these other chapters look of interest to you, then make sure you subscribe so that you can come back and watch them later. My name is Shad Sluter, and I teach software development and computer science at Grand Canyon University. So welcome to class. So we've got one more section ahead of us, and then we're going to move on to other greater things. So right now, we're talking about managing the team with Agile. And so Agile is a software development process. So sometimes you're going to hear in your life the letters, the SDLC, the Software Development Life Cycle. And so this goes from the concept of an idea all the way to where you retire a piece of software and no longer use it. So the SDLC is a way to bring sanity into a complex process, trying to bring some structure into managing something that frequently fails. Right now, there are two basic ideas for how to manage any kind of an engineering project. Waterfall is the traditional method that's been used for centuries, and Agile, well, it's the newest name for a process that is incremental. And so Agile is preferred and probably has some good reasons to be preferred in today's market. So here's what the m previous method looks like. This is the waterfall methodology, and you can see where it gets its name because one step of the process is completed and then falls into the next. So in a waterfall methodology, you try to imagine all of the details of your product up front, and you would design a very comprehensive guide to how to build it. And so you really create it twice in your mind, once in your uh, idea and then second on your paperwork. And then you give it to your engineers and they develop it. Now the, the design then, of course, is structured, it's static, it might be what you want, but it might not be as well. And the risk is that if you have left out any details, they never get addressed. And so this process leads to expensive dinosaurs that people abandoned. And so waterfall methodology, though it sounds logical, in practice it has some issues and the issues are is that we're trying to do all of our thinking about the product up front at one time and we don't usually do a very well good job of that so in comes the second type of software development which is iterative we develop a feature and then test it out and show it to our users and incrementally we increase our product and so this has been proven to be more successful in the long run. And to get that process working, we use the process called Agile. Agile or Agile Scrum, because Scrum is a meeting, a name for a meeting that we do on a regular basis in this process. So really it's Agile Software Development. So what we do with Agile Software Development is we start with a project backlog which is kind of like the waterfall technology where we say we've got a pretty big picture of what we want their app to do. We list all of those features, but we don't implement them all. We just implement the first one or maybe two. We create what's called the sprint backlog, which is a short list of things to do. And then within two weeks to 30 days, we do a sprint. And then finally we have at the end of a short period of time, at the end of our sprint, we have a product that works. We can test it out. Now, it only might be the title screen and the login, but at least we get a view of what the, the, the design is. Uh, so it's a very minimal product. It only has a few features. But we can show that to our users, and then they can decide if we're on the right track or not. And if we're not, then we've only wasted two weeks of time, or we can make adjustments so that we can make corrections for the future. To make this work, we do a few principles. One principle is called self-organizing your teams. You put people together and they have their specialties, but we give them the autonomy to work as a small group. And so this grid here might show you how you would organize an entire company of agile teams. And so you can see that there are four people 
or four teams and each uh, each person then is got their own thing so if you you might have a bigger team than four but usually small teams work best so you can see the specialists specialty such as somebody that's in the ui design somebody's a software developer it looks like we might need some data modeling maybe a database expert but the idea is that we try to come up with these little pods of people now when you come up with these groups it's important that you pick the right people on your team of course we all want the people in the top right corner of our team they have high capacity they're well skilled at their job and they're anxious to get started so we'll give them a green light so the low capacity people are your second choice which is they don't really know what they're doing yet but they're really anxious to get started and then the other two on the left uh, the willingness part that's harder to cure so if we were to respond to these people as they've been given to us maybe you're an agile team leader and you've got this mix of exactly these four people what are you going to do with them well first of all the green we're going to promote we're going to give them flexibility autonomy we're going to let them run their own schedule we're going to make them creative uh, the low capacity people are going to make mistakes of course and so we're going to pair them up with somebody that knows what they're doing we're going to give them training if they don't know what their language is or, or if they haven't worked with a certain technology uh, as the manager you're probably going to want to keep track of this person you're going to help them out share with them what you know or pair them with somebody that does now our third person here is our high capacity but low willingness and so you as the manager of the team are going to probably have to clarify why we're doing what we're doing so one-on-one -on -one meetings clarify the goals the directions why this why this sprint is necessary what the vision of the company is try to clear out any hesitations they have maybe they need a schedule change maybe they need something more interesting to work on but you gotta find out why they're not so willing and then for the last part where you've got these incompetent people that really don't know what they're doing they're just toxic and you should probably fire them now so when you look at your agile team you want to make sure that you can get as many people in the top right quadrant as we can because you're going to make them work kind of independently you're going to put them in co-location areas hopefully where they can see each other frequently and so uh, studies have shown that the further away people are isolated uh, the less effective they are in solving collaboration problems so unfortunately with the COVID plague that we experienced in 2020 many of us didn't have the chance to work with our teammates in the office uh, we started to do remote work but the ideal is to have a close relationship where unplanned meetings can occur quick questions where you can have people show each other ideas uh, you don't have to wait formally to present something you can either go with an idea or abandon it based on immediate feedback so if you do find yourself in the remote work situation which is probably the future uh, try to do as casually as you can um, as you can see in this case we have a mix so some people are remote some people are close by but the idea is to keep up a constant flow of communication so that ideas can be tested or approved or abandoned quickly now one of the things that you're going to work with on a project is the product backlog now a backlog sounds like you're behind but really what it means is a product feature list and so that feature list is going to be everything that your app needs to do and so you can see in the left column of this board we have sticky notes every sticky note is going to describe a feature of the product for example let's say on one of the sticky notes it says I want to display all of the orders of a of a of a user in a date range and print a report so that's a feature now that feature is going to take somebody some work there's going to be lots of other features uh, and each one of those is going to require a sprint to be able to uh, get the work done but we want to identify which which features in the backlog are the most important and when we find the first important ones we're going to put them into the next column the sprint backlog so a sprint as you might recall is a short period of time maybe two weeks and we will work on a few items from the product backlog 
and then you can see the rest of it we're going to move them on until we get done now when you have a sprint planning session you and your teammates are going to pick out some items from that product backlog and you're going to take a look at what needs to be done and prioritize them so you might pick some feature because it's easy to do or you might pick a feature because it's critically important for the app but whatever the reason is you're going to move those items from the product backlog that are going to be currently uh, busy and put them into a sprint backlog and they will get your full attention for the next two weeks so our sprint backlog then is our guide you're gonna put that on a board and you're going to talk about it every single day so your backlog is everything that has to be done either in the app or in the case of the sprint backlog everything that needs to be done in the next two weeks and then of course completing those steps is a daily task so now we've gotten to the term called sprint what are we going to do in that sprint and how long is it going to take so a sprint typically is two weeks long the first day is the planning meeting so that you can decide what the next goals are and you can see that every day of the sprint is a scheduled meeting probably early in the morning that says your daily stand-up so a stand-up meeting is where you literally do not sit down so it doesn't take too long so for 15 minutes you give a brief update on what you're doing and then when we get to the end of the sprint you can see that there are two items one's called a sprint review and a sprint retrospective so you can kind of look back to see what went well and what didn't so the product increment is what we're trying to create in a sprint so an incremental product is something that is like I mentioned less featureful than the full thing but still enough functionality so that we could call it shippable so shippable means you can show it to your client you can show it to the customer they can test it out and give immediate feedback on it so this is the magic of why you do incremental development is that if the product is a failure you can find out right away so instead of building a billion dollars worth of software you spend a hundred thousand dollars worth of software and then you can change it or reject it before you waste too much money so an incremental approach saves money now the daily scrum is where you're going to get together with your teammates and what are you going to talk about well really the agenda is three questions you're going to tell everyone in your team what you did yesterday so yesterday I created the report that would show all the orders from a certain date range and it now converts into a PDF file okay so there's my accomplishment today what will you do today well today I am going to make that available to users or I'm going to make it available to administrators some other new feature and so something concrete and then is there any impediment is the third question so is there something blocking you do I need help do I need a new uh, uh, permissions to something do I need to understand something do I need someone else to do something for me but in the daily scrum you have those three questions now if this is a good way to manage employees because you know what they're doing they can report and they can report to each other so if you have a lazy employee that is just out at the beach and he says what did I do yesterday and he really doesn't have anything concrete if that happens for too often then it's obvious who is the dead wood in your tree and will probably either be terminated or looked over for any further uh, enhancements now when you get to the end of a sprint we're going to call this event the sprint review what we want to do in a review is just to look back at what we created so in this case you're probably going to have your team around your uh, computer showing you the product the digital project you made and in front of us is the man in the chair he is the customer he is the person that is paying you and you can show off this is show and tell to say here's what we made this is exactly what you told us and at the sprint review this is his chance to say I don't like it or perfect you did it in a creative way I love it and uh, let's keep going in the same direction so the sprint review is that periodic checkup point with your client to make sure that you're on the right track now the retrospective is also at the end of the sprint and we just look at our own work process and we ask is there anything that's working really well or is there something that we should change 
and what can we commit for the next sprint so a retrospective just kind of gives us a chance to do some self-improvement if this is relevant to you then check out this other video on the four roles that you would expect to see in a software development team also if you'd like to see the entire playlist of things that we've talked about in the business of apps I'll put that link here as well so thank you for coming and join me again for class